for my research topic, I was putting on TV for my dog. I put on Animal Planet, and I happened to catch my interest because there was a guy searching in Africa, or excuse me, in Asia for a snow leopard, which is one of the rarest animals in that region. And so I named my speech A Secret Life because I remember in A Secret Life of Walter Mitty, he, the photographer was looking for a snow leopard and he was out there for a long time and they emphasized just how rare it is to get to see one in nature. And as you can see just from the picture, it's a beautiful animal. So the snow leopard is the rarest Himalayan animal. It has thick fur, dark spots, and a long tail. It's adapted for snow conditions and mountain conditions. Its paws are extremely large to spread its weight across the snow. And the long tail helps it bounce down the huge cliffs. And these cliffs are full of rocks and they are sharp and it's quite amazing how they can run down them and chase prey. They get about 70 pounds and three and a half feet long from head to rear end, not including the tail because the tail is so long. As you can see, it's uh, about half the body length or more. And they are known as the ghost of the mountain because they are so rare and they're so antisocial. They don't hang out with any other animals, they live a, a solitary life. Now some interesting facts that I found in my research. They have no group name because they're so antisocial, they're never seen together. Unless it's a mom and cubs or two mating, but even then they separate after and they live by themselves. So there's no known group name for multiple snow leopards. They cannot roar, much like you would think they could, like a lion. They have no larynx, I believe, in their throat, which doesn't allow them to roar. They'll eat anything. Their diet consists of as small as mice, or a, like, it's called an ibex, which is kind of like a sheep, a mountain goat. And they even eat birds that happen to come across their path. And these are highly sought after animals because of their pelts, which can get up to about $60,000 for a pelt. Now the threats are people, of course. The pelts are so expensive that it's going to happen. It's just worth so much. And in these poor countries, people are going to do whatever means they need to get money, which is quite sad. The bones in Chinese culture are thought to have a medicinal uh, healing power. So they will take the bones from the animal. Ranching as well, because in that area they have a lot of mountain sheep and, and goats that when the snow leopards attack their cattle, they see that as defending their livelihood. Mining as well, mining in the area has huge impacts on the environment and it will encroach on their habitat. And climate change, of course, they live in the snow. If it gets too hot, it could affect them. Their fur is very dense, and they would probably get too hot. Now, they were endangered, and, and now they're listed as vulnerable. They're thought to be about 4,000 to 6,000 uh, on Earth. And previously, before they put them as vulnerable, they found about uh, 2,000 more, which made them less endangered. <coughs> Now they're known as a keystone species, which like the Yellowstone wolves, means that they have a massive impact on their environment. If they were to be removed, the environment would be unstable. If they weren't there, there'd be overgrazing, which could in turn lead to landslides, flooding, river redirecting, and that all would be very poor for their environment. And the Tibetan monks, actually would be displaced because of that, because the Tibetan monks live in this area and they're so much, sol uh, so live in solid sol solidarity. Now for conservation, they've tried to help the species of the snow leopard with captive breeding 
in zoos, they, in 1980, they enacted that they're going to help them and breed them so that they'll get their numbers up. This could lead to possible inbreeding, but they do their best to uh, diversify which animals are mating. And uh, with that, the Buddhist beliefs, the, the Buddhist people of that area also believe that uh, not in harming the animals. So the Buddhists actually help protect their environment and the animal in the Himalayas. And the sources I got this from were National Geographic and BBC. I hope that you all learned something about the snow leopard and gained a little knowledge and awareness. Thank you.